my channel. Today I'm doing the Around the World Disney Pin Challenge. Now this challenge was started by Emily at Somebody Do Disney and she put the request out to other Disney lovers, Disney YouTubers to do our own Around the World Pin Challenge. So that's what I'm doing today. Now I do know that Becca, Disney Kitty, she too accepted the challenge and I will have both her video and Emily's video in my description box below. Highly recommend that you check those out. I'm also going to include a list of the different categories that I'll be covering in my video today. So if you decide that you want to accept the challenge, you can see exactly what I'm covering. And I also recommend that you do check out Becca and Emily's videos because they too will have their categories listed as well. So you can see which of those categories work with your collection. Okay? So with that said, I'm going to start off with Walt Disney World, mainly because it's the one park that I've been to. Plus, I live on the East Coast, so kind of seems logical. I'm then going to hop over to Disneyland in California, and then I will hop over the pond to Disneyland Paris and so forth. Okay? So the first pin that I have here is for Magic Kingdom, and I'm going to be going through the four parks initially, and then I do have some broader general Walt Disney World pins, so I'll showcase those at the end. And for Magic Kingdom, the first pin that I have here is a piece of Disney history. This is Peter Pan's Magic Flight. And if you're not familiar with a piece of Disney history, I'll give a quick primer. These particular pins have literally a piece from the respective attraction that the pin represents. So in this case, Peter Pan's Flight, this is from Walt Disney World. In fact, this was from the very first year that they did a piece of Disney history pins. So that right there, it's pretty cool. Plus the first three years were in Walt Disney World and subsequent years I know were in Disneyland. And I think now they're kind of going back and forth between the two. But coming back to my pin here, again, it's Peter Pan's flight. You can see up here at the top, it actually looks similar to the sign that you would find out front of the ride, which makes sense. And then here you have Peter Pan on the Jolly Roger. I'm kind of surprised that Tinkerbell is not represented on the pin. But what you see down here are flowers. And the reason that they have those on the pin is because the piece that you have in the pin itself is from flower props that you would have found on the ride. So it's kind of cool that they actually give you a little representation of what the actual piece from the ride is. And if you're ever curious, on the back it does give you a little blurb about the ride, but it, more importantly it tells you what the actual piece in the pin is. Now I am going to preface by saying that there's going to be a lot of these pins in this video today. I do have all of 2005 and they span I think all four parks. So again, you'll be seeing a lot of these. And I do want to mention that the 2005 pin series was an LE of 2500. Next up, I am going to hop over to Epcot, and for that, once again, as mentioned, we have this piece of Disney history pin, again from 2005, and you'll notice it's of Spaceship Earth, but we have here Sorcerer Mickey, and then here we have Epcot at the very tip of a wand. You may remember at the end of 1999, moving into the new millennium, they had a celebration, the millennial celebration, and part of that, they actually had a sign attached to the top of Spaceship Earth, much like the one you see here. And what you also see here is in the bubble, the piece is from the star tip, I believe, at the end of the wand. Now, I myself, I was in Disney not at the time that this rolled out, but I was in Disney the previous April for grad night, because I'm kind of dating myself here, but that was the year that I graduated from high school. And so if you guys ever want to hear about grad night and what that's all about, let me know in the comments below. It was interesting. I'll just say that. But going back to the pin here, I love this pin, number one, because I'm, I was trying to finish the collection. But either way, Spaceship Earth is definitely my like top three rides, I would say, at Epcot. Probably even like my number one. It's just such a classic ride. No matter how many times I go to Disney, I always have to check out Spaceship Earth. And for me, I'm actually a big fan of Sorcerer Mickey. I don't know what it is. And um, maybe it's the magic of it all. I mean, but either way, it's definitely combining a couple things that I really, really like. 
And I'm not sure if it comes across on the camera, but just real quick, it has a bit of pin-on-pin -pin action. And what you have here in the bubble is of this star from Sorcerer Mickey's Wand. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I do have one more pin for Epcot, and that is from the 2018 Flower and Garden Festival, which I believe is still going on. I could be wrong, though. And what I love about this pin is that here you've got this beautiful orange Mickey head, but tucked into it, nice and sort of hidden, you have Spaceship Earth, which again is one of my favorite rides at Epcot. And I love this beautiful flower here at the top. Not really sure what that flower is, but either way, the look of it and the fact that it's got one of my favorite rides all tucked into it, I thought was pretty awesome. And then down here, this second pin, which says Guaranteed Fresh Epcot. I just think it's a cute touch, and whenever I look at it, it makes me want to have a glass of orange juice. Am I the only one? Now, in terms of an LE size, I believe this is 4,000. So, not small by any means, but definitely a cool pin to have. Moving on to Hollywood Studios, I have here a piece of Disney history pin, but this time it's from 2016. I have here the sorcerer hat that once stood proudly in Hollywood Studios. I have to say, I do miss the iconic sorcerer hat. I don't know, it just, again, I like Sorcerer Mickey, and so the hat just, for me, was really cute, really cool. But, you know, I'm okay. You know, Twilight, Tower of Terror now being sort of the icon for Hollywood Studios, you know, that's okay. But here with this pin, again, you have, of course, the Sorcerer Mickey hat, and then in the background you have the water tower. The piece that's in the bubble here, that's from the support structure that held up the Sorcerer's hat itself. And this one from 2016 is a LE size of 1500. It's nice to have a little reminder of a really cool icon that once stood proudly in Hollywood Studios. So for me, definitely had to include this pin. I do have one other pin for Hollywood Studios as well, and this one, again, from that same piece of Disney history collection, is Goofy, and this is for the Tower of Terror. Now, in this pin, I'm not sure if it's easy to see, but instead of a bubble, there's a little sort of rectangular slot in the middle here, and that's a piece of the actual cable from an elevator on the Twilight Zone ride. So, again, I think all of these little add-ons, these little pieces are pretty cool. And I love the fact that you've got Goofy looking like Goofy. And Tower of Terror, it's definitely one of my top rides. Although as a kid, I have to say, roller coasters and any ride where your stomach drops out from under you, I wasn't a big fan of. But, I don't know, with time, I kind of got past that. So I do absolutely love this ride. Now, crazy as it sounds, when we were in Disney this past December, we didn't make it to Hollywood Studios, which again, is probably like sacrilegious on our part, but we spent so much time in Magic Kingdom and Epcot, we didn't make it to both Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. So I guess on the plus side, when we go back, which we're aiming to go back at the end of 2019, we'll have those two additional parks to go to, plus Toy Story Land so excited but back to the pin so again i just want to include this one as well for hollywood studios so rounding out the four parks is this 20th anniversary pin and you can see here you've got the number 20 in the background along with this beautiful tiger and i'm not sure if it's clear on the camera but where you see the number 20 in the back that is all stained glass so it's a beautiful looking pin and also within the body of the tiger now, when you open this up, because it is a hinge pin, you have classic Walt Disney with two tigers. And if memory serves me correct, I feel like this picture is from the Wonderful World of Disney, the TV show that took place on Saturday nights, I believe. I could be totally wrong on that, but I think that's where that's from. It just kind of reminds me of that. Either way, it's a really cool pin. It's nice to have that little look into the past with Walt Disney and it's crazy to think that's been 20 years since Animal Kingdom opened. I mean I can still remember going to the parks in 1999 as mentioned and this was a fairly new park. <sighs> Just dating myself further. But either way I thought this was really appropriate to include for Animal Kingdom and I do know that there's one other pin that looks exactly like this but instead of a tiger I think it's a gazelle but 
not 100% sure. I haven't gotten a up close look at it. So that's the last one I have for Animal Kingdom. So I do have two pins that are for the general Walt Disney World category. And the first of the two that I have is this My First Visit pin. Now this is an open edition pin. You can probably get it today in the parks. You can probably even get it online. But why I'm including this in the video is that for me, there's a lot of sentimental value because as I've mentioned at nauseum with this last trip in December, it was my daughter's very first trip and that's where we picked this sucker up. In fact, we have two, because we have twins. And overall, I think it's a really cute pin. I mean, of course you have Mickey here in the front and then you have in the back all the known icons for the different parks. So you can see the Tower of Terror, Cinderella's Castle, Animal Kingdom, the Tree of Life, and then smooshed in behind Mickey Mouse, you can barely make out Spaceship Earth for Epcot. So it's a really cute pin, and again, it's got some pretty awesome memories attached to it. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to include it in today's video. But last but not least for Walt Disney World, the pin I have here is the 2018 Annual Pass Holder pin. No, I am not an Annual Pass Holder, dare to dream. But I was able to purchase this online. I am a fantastic online shopper. And for me, one of the reasons I purchased this pin is the look of it, the aesthetics I felt were so beautiful. I love the fact that each of the different letters is coming from the font of a different attraction within Walt Disney World. I do know that the P is for Peter Pan's flight, I believe, and I think the A is from It's a Small World, but really the other letters I'm kind of at a loss for. And I've scoured the internet to find a list somewhere that tells you which attractions correspond to which letters, and I've had no luck. So if you know, let me know, I'm so curious. But with that said, I'm gonna segue over to Disneyland because guess what? I have the same one for Disneyland. Now, I do wanna point out that with the Disneyland Resort pin and the Walt Disney World Resort pin, they do share some of the same fonts, such as the P, but you'll notice a good number of the letters in the middle are totally different fonts because of course they've got different rides at each of these different parks. So I thought these were really cool and definitely wanted to include them to, you know, cap off Walt Disney World. And it's a perfect segue into Disneyland. So that is my first pin for Disneyland. The next pin that I have for Disneyland is one that I recently acquired and that is this Sleeping Beauty Castle Disneyland pin. And what I love about this pin is that at the bottom here, it tells you exactly when it was established. So real quick, it says established 1955. And the stained glass that makes up the pin, I think is absolutely beautiful. Now this was from a 2008 cast member exclusive series. There's only 500 of them. So it has been a challenge, we'll just say that, to collect the full series because there's 12 of them. There was one given out each month. But so far I've been able to collect, I would say, half of the pins in the series. And this is, again, one of the pins that came out. But for me, I, I tend to like the stained glass pins, anything that looks like a stained glass window. It also kind of makes me think of Beauty and the Beast, which is one of my favorite Disney movies. So that is one of the pins I have for Disneyland. And very quickly, I do have this additional pin for the Haunted Mansion, which again, down here, it says established 1969. Is it just me or is it crazy that Disneyland was obviously open well before 1969 but it took until 1969 I guess for Haunted Mansion to be added. I don't know, pretty cool. So here you can see we've got of course the mansion itself and I'm thinking that these lines here represent some lightning cracking over the Haunted Mansion itself. Pretty spooky if you will. Now I don't technically have any pins for Disney's California Adventure, but I do have this Disneyland Passport pin, and why I'm going to include this in the video, aside from the fact that I, I do enjoy the pin, is that when you open it up, first off you can see this is for Goofy, and you have all of his information in here, but it's the stamps that I'm considering to be a DCA pin since these are DCA attractions. So you've got the Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, Paradise Pier, and fantasy land. So again, this is technically a Disneyland pin, but I don't know. I'm going to consider it a DCA pin too. 
So with that said, that is the last pin that I have for Disneyland Resort. We're going to hop over the pond to Disneyland Paris. So the first pin that I have for Disneyland Paris is this Mickey head inspired by, of course, Coco and the Day of the Dead. I've mentioned this in past videos, but Coco is definitely one of my top, top, top movies that Disney's produced so far. And the colors I've talked about at nauseum before, I just, I think they're stunning. And when I saw this pin, I... I just had to have it. I would love to be a Coco completist, but there are definitely some pins that are way up there in price, so who knows if that'll ever happen. But again, I just thought having Mickey and having this beautiful artwork on his face, you know, couldn't pass it up. Next up for Disneyland Paris, I have this My Dog pin, and you'll see we've got Mulan and my favorite Disney dog, and probably one of my favorite Disney characters, little brother. I've mentioned before that little brother is definitely one of my main collections but he's kind of like a side collection only because there's not a lot of pins of little brother. I know I've talked about that before but seriously we need more pins because he's so cute just so cute but I was able to get my hands on this pin and I love the fact that you've got again little brother being loved by Mulan and again he just looks so happy and then down here you've got the dangle, and I'm sure this is saying little brother in French. I'm not going to butcher it for everyone's sake, but I thought that was a really cute touch. And then, of course, up here it says, my dog. Now, I know that these are part of a series of pins. I believe the Ellie size on this is 700, so kind of on the low side. And what's really cool about these pins from, again, Disneyland Paris, is that they have the number on the back that tells you out of 700 which number your pin is and for me this is number 502 so I thought that was really cool so hopping over to the Asian parks the first pins that I'm going to show you are from Tokyo Disneyland and those are this Cinderella and Rapunzel pin as you can see they are from the same series which is why I've grouped them together now if you happen to see my Disney 2.0 tag video which I'll have linked below I do have a third pin, an aerial pin, but for the life of me, I can't seem to find it. I know it's somewhere in my crazy house, but for the moment, it is MIA. So I thought these two would be just fine. And one of the reasons I'm including these pins is I think they are absolutely beautiful, very elegant, and they do remind me a lot of the stunning silhouette pins that Shop Disney is rolling out right now. Not loving the surprise aspect of those pins, but you know can't have everything. But with these pins, they did remind me quite a bit. I do love the colors that they used. I love Rapunzel's hair with all the flowers against her silhouette. So overall, I thought these were very appropriate pins to showcase for Tokyo Disneyland. And I do believe these are open edition pins, but I don't know if you can still get these pins. I also don't know if there's any more princesses in this particular series. That's like the one thing I have not been able to figure out. I know there's Ariel, but beyond the three of them, I haven't been able to track any more down. So if you know if there's other pins in this series, let me know. Because I'd love to get more of them. And hopefully someday if I ever do decide to display them, I think these pins along with the stunning silhouette pins could be a nice compliment. So I have one more pin for Tokyo Disneyland, and this is the Monster Sync Ride and Go Seek pin. Now, for me, I love Monster Sync, but more importantly, I absolutely love Boo. I think she is adorable. I thought she was adorable even long before I had my own kids. And one of my daughters, Quinn, she, she definitely looks and reminds me of, of Boo, or at least when she was that age. And so I thought, this seemed appropriate. I love the fact that she's sort of in like a cutesy cartoon form. And then of course you've got good old Mike Wazowski and Sully. So that's the last pin that I have for Tokyo Disneyland. From here, I'm gonna move into Shanghai Disneyland. The first pin that I have for Shanghai Disneyland is this Toy Story Land pin. And you can see you've got a whole host of the main characters. You may or may not know that Shanghai Disneyland recently opened up their Toy Story Land and this is one of the pins that they released. It is an Ellie of 3000, so not bad. And you'll notice we've got, of course, Bullseye, 
Lotso, Rex, Jesse, Woody, and Buzz, and Jesse, Woody, and Buzz are a pin on pin up against the other characters. And then down here, you got the two little aliens along with Toy Story Land. And then I'm not even going to attempt to know what that is along with this beautiful glitter background. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You cannot go wrong with glitter. So that's the first pin that I have for Shanghai Disneyland. The next pin, or really pins, that I have for Shanghai Disneyland are part of a three pin set. And they all came in these really cute little boxes. From what I can tell, these were blind bags. So when you purchased the box, you didn't know which of the three pins you were going to get. And as you can see, there's very little English on the box. So either way, I was able to purchase these on Instagram, so I knew exactly which pins I was getting. So the first of the three pins I have here is good old classic Mickey and Minnie, and you'll see they're also in a cutesy form. And they're standing in front of Storybook Castle, which is, of course, the castle you'd find in Shanghai Disneyland. And with all of the pins, they have this dangle down here at the bottom with 1111 2017 and from what I've been able to find on you know good old Google I believe this is in reference to a shopping holiday or shopping festival so I believe these pins were rolled out to celebrate that I think it's sort of compared to Black Friday that we have here in the States so this is the first of the three pins I don't believe these are limited edition pins but I have not been able to find them online because I have, you know, tried for other people that I know like these pins. The next pin is Chip and Dale and they're standing in front of Sweetheart Confectionery and you'll see they too have the dangle and the 2017. And last but not least, and this is my absolute favorite pin in the set and it's also a pin that I will probably never ever part with and that is this Nick and Judy Hopps pin. And they're standing in front of, I believe this is Adventure Isle. And I just, I absolutely love this cutesy form. I know that Shanghai Disneyland just rolled out some open edition pins of Nick and Judy in this same look and feel. Definitely going to get my hands on those if I can. But, I mean, they're just so adorable in that feel, in that look. And I have to say, Adventure Isle, from what I researched, looks like a lot of fun. Bucket list, definitely. So, on to Hong Kong Disneyland. And... This is technically the last category in the standard list of categories, but I am going to add in one additional category at the very end, and it's kind of an odd category, I'll say that. And the first pin that I have for Hong Kong Disneyland, I literally got this pin just a few days ago, but I love this pin, so I had to showcase it. And that is this Sim Sim Fun Fair pin, and it actually has a little pulling piece to it. This is an Ellie of 300 and you've got a lot of the iconic characters and what's also cool is that right now it looks like Hong Kong Disneyland is rolling out some really cute pins that you would get by playing games and a lot of them I think look very much like these items here on this pin, like the fruit. So I know for example JD Hops I recently saw a pin that literally looked exactly like this. And I believe I've seen a Nick Wilde pin and a uh, Mike Wazowski pin. Slightly different, they were actually like standing. But for the most part, I feel like, you know, this is a whole look and a whole theme. And I just, I love the fact that you had them all in this bowl. I'm guessing this is a bowl of fruit salad or maybe some kind of dessert. But either way, it is adorable. And again, I think it's really cute that you have that sliding action. I did also want to include this lovely food cart with all these beautiful hidden Mickeys. This is from the first annual pin trading carnival that came out of Hong Kong Disneyland. I think this is adorable. You've got all these different hidden Mickeys and you can see all the characters are shaped after different food that I'm guessing you would find in the park. So starting over here you've got Duffy, Stella Lou, Shelly Mae, Gelatoni, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is like a waffle because that's what it makes me think of. So you've got Mickey there, you've got Jack Skellington as some kind of, I'm sure, delicious sandwich, Cheshire Cat as a lollipop, Stitch as a good old thing of popcorn, Olaf as some frozen drink, and then here we got Winnie the Pooh as some french fries, I'm going to say Mike Wazowski as a cotton candy, and the three little aliens make three adorable little dumplings. 
So again, I thought this was really cool. I believe this is a limited edition set, but I don't know if they have a particular size on it. Either way, it took a hell of a long time to get here from overseas. And initially, I thought the backer card, when I looked at it, I thought that was also a pin. So I was a little surprised when it came in the mail, but I mean, either way, it's adorable. And what's really cool is that on the back here, it has a little stand. So you could literally prop this up on your deck and have it displayed exactly how it is. So again, a lot of cute pins all in one all in one place. So last but not least, as mentioned, I do have sort of an odd category that I wanted to add in. And that category is going to be Disney pins that are from one park, but are for other Disney parks. So if that sounds confusing, hopefully I will clear that up in just a second. And for that, I have this additional item from the Pin Trading Carnival that came out of Hong Kong Disneyland. This is a booklet it's an LE of 800, and I do know that a couple other Disney YouTubers have unboxed this on their channel. I know Disney Kitty and Laura 2.0, they showcase this little booklet here. And when you purchase this booklet, it comes with one starter pin. So not all of the pins come with the booklet itself. The idea is that if you attended the Pin Trading Carnival, there were games and events that you could attend, and I believe if you participated, you got a pin. I don't know if you were able to purchase these pins, but all in all, from that carnival, their pins would then go inside this booklet. And for me, it was a lot of eBay online shopping and a little bit of Facebook stocking to get the full collection. And with that, inside, the pins that you see here, each one represents a different Disney park, However, the pins technically are all from Hong Kong Disneyland. So that's what I mean when I say they are from one park, Hong Kong Disneyland, but they represent other Disney parks. Starting over here, we have Mickey Mouse, and he's representing not only Tokyo Disneyland, but each pin represents a celebration that takes place at the respective park. And so in terms of Tokyo Disneyland, it says that this is an event, the Disney Natsu Matsuri Summer Festival. Please let me know if I just massacred those words. And during that event, the various Disney characters play traditional Japanese instruments. So moving up to Hong Kong Disneyland, this Nick and Judy pin, this is the one that came with the booklet, which is appropriate since it's from Hong Kong Disneyland. And for me, I think this is a stunning pin of both Nick and Judy. There's a lot of detail in the pin. For one, Nick is holding a a bucket of popcorn. It looks like Judy has, I'm going to say a fudgicle, but maybe it's a popsicle. And then on both of them, they've got lanyards, kind of like you would find with pin trading. And then you have these beautiful flowers. You have this train in the background. The sign here, itty bitty bitty, says Disney Friends Springtime Festival. So that's the festival that for Hong Kong Disneyland, their pin is celebrating. And there's glitter and just so beautiful, just an absolutely beautiful pin. Moving down here for Walt Disney World, we have the Flower and Garden Festival that, of course, is taking place at Epcot. And what you'll see here is you've got Mickey Mouse as a topiary. I don't think Duffy is. I'm not really sure what's going on with Duffy, but he looks like his head is in a flower. And then behind them, we can see Spaceship Earth, and then some nice little flowers scattered about, and then of course the sign for the Flower and Garden Festival. Now moving down here to Disneyland Resort in California, this you can see is a Halloween pin, so I'm not sure, is Halloween a big thing in Disneyland California? I mean like more so than other places? Because this is celebrating the Hollywood party at Disneyland Resort with Disney villains. So let me know. And so with this particular pin, you of course have Sleeping Beauty's Castle, looking all spooky. And then when you open it up, because it is a hinge pin, you've got four of the well-known villains. So here we've got, of course, Maleficent, Ursula, the Evil Queen, and Cruella de Vil. So it's a really pretty pin. It says down here, Halloween time. And it doesn't obviously come across on camera, but the background here does glow in the dark. I haven't witnessed the glow in the dark just yet, but you know, that's what it said on the sticker. All right, so rounding out with these last two, we've got Remy 
And you can see he's standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, so of course this is Disneyland Paris. And these little pockets don't like to stay shut. And in this case, it's representing the food and wine festival that takes place at Disneyland Paris. And last but not least, we have down here Shanghai Disneyland, and this is representing the cool summer holiday at Shanghai Disneyland, so I'm not really sure what that's all about. And you'll notice with, we've got Donald Duck here, as well as Chip and Dale, and it looks like they are chilling out with some lovely drinks. This is a beautiful clamshell that they appear to be sitting in. It's got such beautiful glitter in the background. Hong Kong Disneyland pins are just by far my favorite pins. Probably because they have so much glitter, but they are just, again, such beautifully detailed pins. So that was not only the last pins that I wanted to showcase, but that was the last category in this challenge. So again, thank you all for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, if you do your own Disney pins challenge, let me know. Definitely tell me in the comments below. I would love to watch other Disney pin challenge videos. And if you guys haven't done so already, definitely subscribe because I'm going to keep doing additional videos. I have some unboxings for Mickey's Mystery Box coming up in like the next day or two. And also, if you haven't done so, definitely click notifications so you know when those videos hit YouTube. Alright, so with that said, thank you again everyone and I hope you have a great day.